Checking on my baby whether the nose still are blocked. One of the most common complications for babies is struggling to breathe is blockage of their nostrils or airways. One nostril is blocked, the left one, so I want to clean the, the, the nostril. Oxygen therapy and CPAP are usually delivered through nasal prongs. If the nostrils are blocked, then the baby will not be getting the oxygen or FiO2 it needs, greatly reducing its chances of recovery. For premature or sick babies, this can make a big difference to their saturation levels, which is why suction pumps are such important pieces of equipment in any neonatal unit. They can be used to remove blockages caused by mucus, vomiting or bleeding. This film will show you how to assemble a suction machine. Subsequent films in this series will show you how to suction a baby and maintain and troubleshoot the machine. You will find that sick babies need to be suctioned regularly to keep them breathing well. So let's look at the different parts of the machine. The on-off switch is on the front of the machine. Next to it, there is a knob that regulates the pressure. You can see the pressure in the pressure gauge. The amount of pressure required for a newborn is very small, between minus 60 and minus 100 on the inner scale. It is the area marked in green. It is very important not to go above this pressure, as you will harm the baby if you do so. The tissues inside their mouth and their nose are very delicate. Fluids sucked from the baby are taken to the suction pump reservoir. There are two ports at the top. The machine port to which you attach a short piece of tubing to the machine and the patient port to which you attach a long piece of tubing. There is a bacterial filter between the reservoir and the machine. There is also a float valve which will stop the machine from sucking if the reservoir gets too full. Finally, there is a catheter at the end of the long tubing to put inside the baby's nose. This should be size 6, 8 or 10 French gauge. Wider tubing size 8 or 10 will produce less pressure, which can be better for very small babies. You can also use the machine with a Yankawa sucker to remove vomit or large secretions through the mouth. So, let's see how all of these fits together. Wash your hands before you start. The first thing we need to make sure of... The suction machine is heavy enough to cause real damage were it to fall. So, make sure that it is sitting on something stable, where it cannot fall onto a baby. The pump uses mains electricity. So make sure that the cable is well plugged in at the back. So to be sure that the machine is receiving the power from the source, we need to check by switching on and then off. The float so valve which fits into the cover of the reservoir or suction bottle comes apart. So you may have to put it back together. Check there is actually a valve inside. The valve has a black rubber top which fits in with the top facing upwards. It has to be this way up to work. And make sure we connect the float valve to the cover of the suction bottle and we secure it tightly. The bacterial filter goes in immediately above the float valve. You push it into the small hole in the cover. The filter stops germs from being sucked into the machine. Next, put the reservoir bottle into its holder on the side of the machine. And now you can attach the tubes. We have two tubes. The two tubes are the same diameter. However, one is shorter than the other. Put the short one in first. The shorter tube is the machine connecting tube, which we connect to 
the bacteria filter and onto the machine inlet port on the suction machine. The longer piece of tubing is the patient tubing which gets connected to the patient port on the lead of the reservoir. Now you need to set the correct pressure on the machine. So we need to regulate our suction pressure between negative 60 to negative 100 millimeters of mercury. So what we do is we switch on the machine and we cover the end of the patient tubing. To set the pressure, the end of the patient tubing needs to be completely blocked. When you do this, you will see the pressure gauge go right up. Use the regulator to bring it back down until it is in the safe range. To a negative hundred. So we are looking. Remember, you are looking at the red numbers. So I'm um, within the range of negative sixty to negative hundred. So this is the suction pressure which we can use for a newborn infant. Finally, you can attach the catheter at the end of the patient tubing. You need a connector to do this. Ideally, you will use a connector with a hole which allows you to stop and start suctioning more easily. You can test the machine by sucking up a bit of water. You need to close the hole on the connector to suck. Now put on a mask, an apron if available, and you are ready to start suctioning a baby.